Previously in our video, we have created a sweetlet script which displayed hello world. But in this video, we're gonna create a sweetlet script which gonna display this basic form with all these buttons, user information fields, mark all and unmark all buttons and sublist fields and the column fields and all those things. So in order to build this particular basic form, Netsuite provides a suite script module called as server widget module which provides all different APIs to add the buttons, fields, sublists and all those things. So we're gonna use those server widget module to add our form fields and all those things. So I'm gonna go to Netsuite help center and I'm gonna search for server widget module. So this is a server widget module which we have and if I just scroll down we can see multiple object members for this server widget module. So we're gonna make use of a form object members. So I'm gonna search for server widget dot and we can see multiple options available and here we can see a form if i just scroll down we can also see create form so we're gonna create a form first so i'm gonna make use of this create form api and this create form api is going to return server widget dot form if i just open that api it returns server widget dot form so this if i just scroll up you can see this form object members so first i'm gonna add this server widget dot create form api in my code so i'm gonna copy this code and go back to my Visual Studio code and paste this here. So since I'm using this particular create form API from the server widget module, I have to declare the server widget module. So let me declare the server widget module n slash UI forward slash server widget. And I'm going to pass the server widget or server widget to this particular argument. And I'm going to upload this code to my Netsuite account. So I'm going to rename this particular title as basic form. And we still have the response dot write as hello world. So even though if I just try to test this, now let's go to our execution URL and refresh this page. You can still see that it's just displays hello world. We don't see any form. So why we are getting still the same hello world, not the basic form. So in order to validate or not to tell you what is happening in the backend. So I'm going to make use of the script context argument, which has two options or params called as request and response. So I'm going to copy this server request param and go to help center. And I'm going to search it in the help center for server request. We get the results when we search in the help center in the first two results. So I'm going to click either any one of this. So I'm going to click on the second one. If I just scroll down, there is an option called a server request object members. I'm going to click on the server request object members. So if I just open that, you can see server request object members. And also if I just scroll down, we have the server response object members also. So in our code, we are using this response object members dot write API to write this particular hello world so if i just scroll down we have this server response dot write is used to write informations like text or xml or html code in our browser as a response since we are creating the forms so we're gonna make use of this server response dot write page if i just open this api you can see that it is used to generate a page and it accepts the values like form list and assistant so since we have already created a form using the create form API, I'm going to pass this variable called form in a different API called as response.write page. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this API sample code. And instead of this response.write, it should be response.write page. So I'm going to paste the script context dot response.write page. And in my page object, I'm going to replace this with. So now let's upload this code and test our form so let's refresh our sweetlet we can see the basic form or title is being shown there is a spelling mistake i will just rename that or correct it in our next upload so now that we have added the form title now let's try to see how to add this particular user information section so in order to add that i'm going to go back to my netsuit account so we have added the form so i'm going to search for form object members create form API return server widget dot form so which is nothing but form object members so if I just click on this form object members you can see all the list of methods and the APIs available for this so I'm going to add the field group so I'm going to copy this API form dot add field group which accepts few parameters like ID label and the tab so I'm going to copy this field group and go to our code and before writing the page or displaying the page or the form I'm going to add this code which says form dot add field group and I'm going to provide some proper field ID for this by prefixing with cust page underscore and the name as user group the so label I'm going to mention it as user information now we have added our user information section 
next thing we will try to add some fields under this user information section so let's say try to add this particular field called as first name so in order to do that let's go back to netshoot account and the same form object members will try to find if there is a field api yes we can see that form dot add field api let me open that api and it accepts few parameters like id label type source and the container so we're going to make use of this form dot add field api so i'm going to copy this basic syntax form dot add field as and i'm going to paste it below the field group so we have added our first field but i'm going to rename this field as first name and i'm going to rename the variable name as f name and the id as prefix with cust page underscore f name field and if you see this also as a type like which says what type of field it should be whether it should be text field or date field and how can i set this value to a different things so if i just go back to our api in our add field api we can see that the type and in the type the description has some enum values provided so i'm going to open this server widget dot field type in this field type we can see different values like checkbox currency date and all those things so we're going to make use of a text field so i'm going to leave it as it is so let the text be as it is and we have renamed it to f name so i'm going to label it as first name and upload this code on the other hand as per our requested format or the form which we're going to design i have made this field as a mandatory field so since i have to make this field as a mandatory field i'm going to go back to netshoot api which is form dot add field api which says it returns server widget dot field and if i just go to our module in our module we can see the field object members which is nothing but the following members are called as server widget dot field so in this field object members we can see some properties and methods in the properties we can see that there is a mandatory option so i'm going to copy this value and i'm going to add it either like f name dot is mandatory or directly i can place it here like dot is mandatory is equal to true so i'm going to upload this code and test our sweetlet so let's go to our script or the sweetlet and refresh our current sweetlet you can see that first name is being shown up and if you see we don't see that user information section the reason why we don't see that user information section is nowhere we have mentioned that this field should belong to this particular user information so if i just go back to our add field api again one more time and if i just scroll down we can see there is a source and container so the container description says the internal id of the tab or field group to add the field to so this is the parameter we have to use in our add field api so i'm going to add this parameter here and i'm going to pass the field id of the field group so and i'm going to pass the id of the field group on this particular container so now let's upload this code one more time and we can retest this code in our sweetlet now let's test our code now just refresh this basic form we can see this user information the field is being under this user information section so far we have achieved this particular user information section and the first name and we have to add remaining two fields like email and last name so i'm going to add those two fields also so in my visual studio code i'm going to add those two fields one is for last name and the other one is for email so if you see this i have changed the type to email and for the other last name field the type is still text and i have placed it under the same user group now let's upload this code and confirm whether all these three fields appear now if i just go back to netshoot and refresh this page we can see all the three fields being shown up under user information now let's go back to our expected output so we are also planning to add few fields or buttons like reset button and submit button so in order to do that i'm going to go back to our server widget module help center and i'm going to search for form object members in our form object members we can also see there is a button which is a small custom button and if i just scroll down we can also see add submit button and there is a button for reset also so i'm going to make use of this form dot add reset button and form dot add submit button to add those two buttons so let's first add this form dot add reset button if i just scroll down we just have this basic syntax and this just accepts only one parameter called as label so i'm going to copy the syntax and paste it here now in the same way we going to add this form dot add submit button so i'm going to copy this form dot add submit button syntax even this accepts only one parameter called as label let's go to our code and add this form dot add submit button let's leave the label as it is and let's upload this code and test it on our netshoot
Now if I just go to Netsuite account and if I refresh this page, you can see those two buttons are being displayed. Now we have added all the user information, buttons and the first name and the body level fields like first name, last name and email. Now we are supposed to add this sublist with sublist column fields like select customer internal ID, transaction number and this mark all and unmark all buttons. So let's see how to do that. So let me just go back to Netsuite account. And if I just open the server widget module help center page, same, I'm going to make use of form object members one more time. Here, let's see if there is an option to add the sublist. You can see there is an API called as form.add sublist. I'm going to open this API. So this API accepts multiple parameters like ID, label, tab, and type. So if I just scroll down, we can see this sample syntax provided from Netsuite. So I'm going to copy this and go to our Visual Studio code and add this particular form.add sublist. Now if we have an option to provide the ID for this sublist and there is an, if you notice there is a type also what type of sublist it should look like whether it should be inline editor or list. So you could have seen multiple type of list like when you run some sales result you would see a different list and when you open the sales order and if you see the item sublist which will contain some kind of buttons like add, remove and all those things. So those are like kind of different types of sublist. So in this case, I'm going to pass this as list instead of inline editor. Or did I come up with this value? Let's go back to our help center. If I just scroll up the parameter section, we have this type and it also has an enum type of values like server widget dot sublist type. I just open this. We can see all different types of values we can provide inline editor, editor, list and static list. You can just go through the description on what kind of sublist you want to add. So I'm going to add it as list. So I have added it as list in my code. And now I'm going to rename this ID with some proper sublist ID. So I'm going to prefix with cust page underscore and sublist ID. So let's rename this label to sublist instead of inline editor sublist. And let's upload this code and see whether our sublist is added or not. Now let's refresh this page. We can see our sublist is being added, but we don't see our mark all, unmark all buttons and column level fields under the sublist. So let's see how to add them. Now I'm going back to my server widget module help center. Sublist. I just scroll down. We can see the sublist object members. I'm going to click on this. We have this add mark all buttons and I don't see any unmark all buttons. I think the description clearly says adds mark all or unmark all button together for this sublist dot add mark all button API. So for the sublist dot add mark all buttons API, it is going to add mark all and unmark all buttons. So let's use this API. It does not accept any parameter. We just need to add this API. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in our code. Form, next to our form dot add sublist, I have pasted this sublist dot add mark all buttons. Let me rearrange this. Let me just paste this add dot submit button on top. Now let's see how to add few fields on the sublist. So go back to our help center module. And on the same sublist object members, we can see that sublist.add field option is also there. I just go open that sublist.add field API. It's almost similar to our form.add field API. So if I just scroll down, we can copy the basic syntax. And I'm going to paste it in my code sublist.add field. I'm going to rename this field ID with some proper field. Let's say I'm going to add my first field as a checkbox, like the select checkbox. I'm going to add this as checkbox and by prefixing like cust page underscore and the type we know it has to be checkbox and we have already seen the enum values for this field type so i'm going to make this as checkbox label i'm going to name it as select and let's upload and see whether our field appears on our sublist now if i just go back let's shoot our basic form and if i refresh this we can see that the sublist mark all and unmark all button is also shown and we can see the select field also so now we are just left out with adding three more fields like customer internal id and the transaction number so to do that i am going back to my code and i'm going to add those three remaining fields so i have added the remaining three fields like customer internal id and the transaction number and i have provided the proper type field type for those things and i'm going to upload this code to netsuite and we're going to test whether these fields appears or not so other than that, every single thing or other code remains same. I have just kept this right page at the end of my code so that it just covers all this form related objects. So let's go to our Netsuite account and refresh this page. 
can see that mark all and mark all button and all the fields which we have seen so far so as per our plan on this video we have achieved all the things on this form like basic form like button fields user information section sublist fields and everything but only thing which we missed out is we are not doing any result set in our sublist like sweet script a or the values transaction number internet id all those things so in our next video we will see how to display the results in our sublist